Hey guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be sharing with you everything I made in the month of March. This is a monthly makes video, but I probably could have equally just called it my So Frugal Reveal video because the four finished projects that I'm going to share with you guys today were all for So Frugal. But I do also have a work in progress to share. I'm also going to give an update on my 24 for 2024 and a general life update at the end. As always, there are chapters down below, so feel free to skip ahead, skip around for bits that you're more interested in. I'm going to start with what I'm wearing now. This is the Closet Core t-shirt, a free one from Closet Core Patterns. It is one that I've had my eye on for a while. I know that a lot of people, once they make it, they're just like in love. That's their go-to t-shirt. I think it has a really unique style. The thing that is different for me is the boxiness and the cropped option. And that is what I was curious to try out. I tend to go for a more fitted t-shirt and I really do love my more fitted tees, but it's nice to have a boxier shape. I'm not someone who tends to go for a boxy kind of style because I feel like I need some kind of waist definition in what I'm wearing or I just kind of lose it and I look bigger than I am. I feel sloppy. But because this has a cropped view, having the boxy cropped alternative for me kind of still gives me a bit of waist definition. You can see that I've got some shape underneath there and it pairs really well with higher waisted trousers and skirts, which I am very much gravitating towards these days. I am really happy with how this one came out. I did make a few adjustments. So I sized down one size. I wanted it boxy, but I didn't want it overly like swimming on me. And I feel like that is absolutely like the perfect amount of oversized for me. I also really like the bagginess of the sleeve. I feel like the looseness of the sleeve is absolutely perfect and goes really well with the looseness of the top. I did a half inch forward shoulder adjustment, which is just a standard shoulder adjustment for me. It worked really well. I did a little like a cheater full bust adjustment. I knew that there was going to be room across the bust because it is boxy and looking at the finished garment measurements, it was going to be bigger than my bust, but I lowered the front of it down by half an inch because things tend to pull up when you have a fuller bust. I could have gone for more. When I look at the side, I can see that it is still a little bit up at the front. And the back, I did a two inch sway back adjustment, which I thought would be enough because I usually do have a lot of bagginess in the mid back. And still the back is tipping down. So I think like the side seams are exactly where the t-shirt needs to be, but the very front is still a little high and the back is still a little low. So I would probably just alter those ever so slightly on future versions. But overall, I am really happy with the fit. The one thing that I didn't like was the height of the neckline when I first made it. It's meant to have a crew neckline, but when I put it on, it was like really on my neck. I like it to sit just kind of at the breastbone and it felt like it was just too high and uncomfortable. And so I decided to actually just cut the whole neckband out, lower it down. I think I ended up lowering it by about three quarters of an inch. I didn't mean to go that far. It's kind of a little bit tricky when you're just eyeballing it though. I do really like this t-shirt and I'm happy with it as it is, but I think the neckline should probably be a little bit higher just to suit the style of it. In general, I feel like the construction of this one was great. There were options for the back neckline. And I, in my initial version, I did the one where there's like a facing that you fold over and top stitch down. I think it's a nice concept and I think it's a nice look from the inside that you don't see those serger seams or your just seam allowance if you used a sewing machine and it just looks really nice and neat on the back. But the way they had you do it is you almost made like a bias binding with your knit fabric. So you folded the edges in and then you folded it in half and sort of stitched it down like that. It's slightly different construction, but that's the end effect of what you get. And the end result was honestly really quite bulky and I felt like it was really awkward to sew through it. I didn't feel like it looked as neat as I wanted it to look. And when I was gonna change the neckband and lower it a bit, I had to pull that out. I did snap a photo so you can see what it looks like. I don't think it's bad but I didn't think it was worth the faff of putting it back in because I didn't love the way it looked in the end. So I just went for the standard, just surged edge. It is as it is, and I'm absolutely happy with that. I did use a twin needle just to put it all, make, make it nice more on the outside, but on the inside, I think it just looks fine, honestly, like most standard basic t-shirts. The one thing I will say with that neckband, so the, the reason why I mentioned that it was really bulky and a lot to sew down was folded over and then folded over itself again, 
I have had that kind of facing, is it facing binding option on the back of a sweatshirt once before, and they just had to use a strip of fabric and then just do two lines of stitching above and below to cover over and then trim it down. Because most jerseys don't fray, you can still get that nice neat look without having so much bulk and being a little bit easier to sew through. So if I was gonna do that kind of binding, that's what I would do rather than what they had you do on this t-shirt. The other thing I should mention, the pocket, is probably my favorite detail. I love the pocket on this t-shirt. I think it looks super cute with this style, but honestly, I wanna steal this pocket for other t-shirts as well. I love a, t a pocket on a t-shirt. They're not functional. They're just there for the look, and I think they look really cute. It's a good size pocket. I think it's in a good location. I was conscious that I wasn't gonna use this pocket, and I didn't want it to get kind of wobbly because it's such a central part of the top. I didn't want the seams to look kind of wobbly and not very neat. So what I ended up doing was I actually used some woven interfacing and I went around the edge of all the seams, a bit bigger for the bit that was folding over. And then I just top stitched with a straight stitch because I know with the interfacing, it's not gonna be stretching, it's not gonna be moving around. And I feel like it went on really beautifully. I'm really happy with the way that came together and that is definitely how I would do that with pockets on t-shirts in the future. I almost forgot to mention this t-shirt I also submitted for the Sew Yellow for Endo Challenge. Jess, who is So What If I Sew here on YouTube and on Instagram, organizes a challenge every year in April, no, March, to encourage people to sew something yellow and to donate to Endometrius Charity. And that is to both raise awareness, also raise money about endometriosis and women's menstrual health in general, which I think is a hugely important topic, something I very much support. And it was nice to be able to use this t-shirt for both. What I ended up doing is I asked Jess if it was okay if I just sent her a DM of this t-shirt because there's the So Frugal Real Reveal Day different from the So Yellow for Endo Reveal Day. So at least she could see that I'd made the thing on the reveal date for her challenge. And then I was able to actually post it on the 31st of March for the So Frugal Challenge. The next one to tell you about is my flop of the month. You're not always gonna have successes, guys. And this one did not work out how I had hoped. This is the Peppermint Boxy Tee from Peppermint Magazine, another free pattern. I had high hopes for this one because I love this fabric so much and I feel like when I shared pictures on Instagram I feel like people were not really understanding my issues with it and more just admiring the fabric which I get. The fabric really does speak to you and it is truly truly beautiful. The nice thing about this pattern, the reason I wanted to make it is because it uses pieces. So there's a yoke at the front and the back. Oh no, yeah, there's a yoke at the front and the back at the top. There's also a hem band at the bottom. There's a sleeve band and the bottom or the back has buttons. So it's two sides. So you've got like quite small pieces to put together. I had this fabric left over from a dress that I made in the spring of the year before, I guess two years ago now. And I made that for a new craft house party. I love the dress that I made. It's the M7969, I think. I'll pop it up on the screen if I've got it wrong. It's a really well-known wrap dress pattern. It's a, a wrap bodice, I should say. I initially made it for the party with these really long loose sleeves for like, a, it was the theme I think was like peace and love. It might've been slightly different. I'll put it on the screen if I've got it wrong. But I thought like a really fun 70s style a long loose sleeve would be really fun for the party but then I ended up trimming it down and gathering it to be a three-quarter length sleeve with the binding which is the initial intention of this design. I really like both versions but obviously I have the one that I'm stuck with now which is the three-quarter length big balloon sleeve which really do love but this fabric is so so beautiful it's from the fabric godmother it's their one of their collections and it's a viscose lawn fabric it is so so soft it's one of the most like lightweight beautiful drapey movie fabrics and because I wanted to place the pattern design the flower pattern design on my dress with a really intentional like design look I had a lot of really odd pieces left over and I didn't want to get rid of them so they were just like a bit like weird long strips which was perfect for this pattern in theory. Now when you look at it on the hanger I think it looks amazing. When you first glance at it on me I don't think it's too bad but guys it is it's not great. So it's the boxy shape that I was saying that I generally don't love on me, and I do think it makes me look bigger than I am. It doesn't feel, like I said, it just feels kind of sloppy. I, I don't feel comfortable in it. I had hoped, because the fabric was so drapey, that it would kind of, you know, go into my curves a little bit more and hug my body, and it just kind of hangs there in a way that I don't love. I was willing to accept that as it was, honestly, and I felt like, you know what, I'm gonna wear this. I think it's really beautiful in so many other ways. 
it came together really nicely. I used a binding, so there is supposed to be a binding detail, and I had such a debate about whether to use use a facing, sorry, or to make binding, because this fabric is actually a bit sheer, and I think you might even, I don't know if you can see on here, but you can kind of see the edge of the binding through, and I didn't want to use the same fabric because I knew the floral print would really stand out, but I went for a nude binding. This is a viscose lining that I feel like works really well for it. So in general, it is finished nicely. I also really love the buttons. So these are Ethel and Joan buttons. I decided to use a variety of their buttons. And my favorite, let me find you guys, the blue. I felt like the blue button was actually a really good match for the blue flowers on there. So to me, they are definitely the perfect button choice. The fit in general was fine. Now, the other thing that I really would say is a big downside for this pattern is that the size range is really not good. My hip size is too small for this pattern, so I had to grate out at the hip for a 43 inch hip, which to me is really not great. So I, I did do it, it's okay, but it's not one that I'm gonna be highly recommending. Now, let me get back to the issue with it. So I made it up and I was like, this is really pretty. I love the colors on it. And I wore it to the Stitch Festival thinking, yeah, this is a really, you know, it's a cute design, even if it's not the best shape. And I wore it underneath some overalls. They were the Soho 7 Burnside bibs in this really vibrant white viscose linen fabric that I have. I really did like them together and I felt like it was a really fun combination. Little did I realize until the like next week, I went to go take some photos of this top. And I looked in the mirror and moved my arm and realized it is a really big low armhole. Like that armhole is massive. And you can see probably about halfway down my bra and like a good, I don't know, quarter way into the front, like past the side seam into my bra. I got my husband to take a photo of a more conservative view. Honestly, there I had photos that I wouldn't be happy to show you guys because it was like too much bra going on. I did wear a nude bra underneath because I knew that you could see through. It's fine I, for the photos. I don't mind sharing with you guys, but I'm not willing. I am not happy to be going around revealing that much of my undergarments. If it was a light, like not as light of a see-through of a fabric, I could even maybe like get away with wearing like a really cute bra that I don't mind showing, but it would look really bad through the semi-opaque fabric. So yeah, it was definitely not not one that I was gonna be reaching for again and again. It's not a good shape for me, but also more importantly, it's just too flashy. Now I have not given up on this yet. So I do still have some scraps of this left over, but also honestly, I feel like because it's so boxy and oversized, I think I can make it work. So I have another top pattern. It's the La Brea Tea by Half Moon Atelier that I've made numerous times before. And I actually have in the past kind of trimmed another pattern down to basically make it that shape. And I think that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. The concept of the piecing at the top, so the yoke at the front and the back and the hemband, I think is a concept that I do want to try with other scraps of fabric because it is really good for using up smaller bits, especially when you have a like a button placket down the back so it's not even one complete seam on the back. So I do wanna play around with that idea, most likely using the Liberty, a pattern, like I said, that I know works for me. We'll see if it works. I will let you guys know next month because I think it's something I'm gonna be cracking on with pretty soon because I so love this fabric. I really, really do love this fabric and I want it to work. The next one to tell you guys about is another t-shirt, but it's very much a scrappy t-shirt. And that is this one right here. So if you did see my So Frugal Inspo video, this is very much the kind of thing I wanted to do. Both of these two tops I've just shown you were made from scraps, but this one I think looks like it's made from scraps. This is the Uvita, Uvita top by Itch to Stitch. Free sewing pattern, these are all freebies, but I'm just gonna mention it just in case. But this one is meant to be a relaxed fit t-shirt. Now, I will say in my experience of making a lot of relaxed fit t-shirts, both the Concord Grafton, the Mandy Boat tee, there's like a, an odd like how boxy, how relaxed is relaxed, but also those t-shirts often have really tight sleeves, which I it's cute, but I don't always want a tight sleeve with a relaxed body t-shirt. So this one I liked, it looked like to me the right amount of just relaxed. It has a drop sleeve as well, which I felt like would go really well for my color blocking ideas. And I'm so happy with how this one came out. So this t-shirt is definitely now like my relaxed fit long sleeve tee. 
I have plans to make some pajamas using this pattern. So I did show in my recent video a haul from the Stitch Festival. And I will say that that fabric that I was making pajamas from, this was the vision that I had. I'm gonna be using this pattern to make it. Now, the fit, like I said, is really good. I made small adjustments, very similar to what I did here, probably exactly the same. I did a half inch forward shoulder adjustment. I lengthened the very front of the bodice by half an inch and I did a two inch sway back adjustment. All of this honestly was just because these are things I tend to notice on patterns that I need to do. And actually I felt like because these were free patterns, because these were scraps, I could kind of just wing it and see what happened. This one, I feel like it worked really well. I did also slightly go out, like curve out the bust about three eighths of an inch on the front of the bodice, front of the top, I should say, around the bust area. And I feel like this is just like the perfect fit, relaxed fit t-shirt for me. The sleeves are a little bit long, which honestly I like. You could shorten the sleeves a bit if you aren't someone who has particularly long arms, just because I don't usually have to lengthen sleeves or shorten sleeves. I'm usually about right for most patterns. So it was interesting, it was a little longer, but it does feel extra cozy in that way. As far as how I pieced it all together, there were lines. So I used the line for the drop sleeve for one of my color blocking sections. I also used the three quarter length sleeve line and I trimmed along there to the color blocking section on the two halves of the sleeve. Now I will say I, I did when I was piecing it all together find that some of these pieces actually seemed bigger than I was expecting so my initial vision I had to pivot a little bit to be able to use the fabrics that I had. I also had to add a seam on the back which I don't know if you can see the avocado print I didn't have a long enough piece for the front and for the back but honestly I don't think it matters as the back of my t-shirt. I'm not seeing it. I don't think anyone's looking that closely at the back of my t-shirt. I feel like the overall effect is very much what I was going for. I think it looks really fun and cool. I like all those fabrics together. I feel like the colors work really well together. I would make the neckband a bit thicker on future versions. It is quite a narrow neckband, so that's probably the only change I would make for future. But it's a great t-shirt, great way to use up my scraps. It was really nice to be able to use up, particularly the avocado print scrap I've had for ages. I made a La Brea tee that I mentioned. They, they do a knit and a woven version. I made a La Brea tee with the avocado fabric, which is honestly, since I made it, has been one of my favorite t-shirts and I don't see that changing anytime soon. I think it's super, super cool. And I use these other two fabrics, both of them to make recent t-shirts. I made videos about those recently. The Concord tee by Cashmeret and the Grafton tee by Cashmeret. And I like those, but I felt like the colors were just too perfect not to use my scraps up. And it was a win. The final finished make that I wanna show you guys is the one that I'm the most proud of. It was definitely a little more ambitious and I'm really happy with how it came together. It is the West End Jacket by Peppermint Magazine. So this is another free pattern from Peppermint Magazine. I will say both these Peppermint patterns that I got, you can pay what you want, so you can pay a little bit. And I think I did pay maybe for this one just because I felt like I appreciate them. I don't wanna just take everything for free, but you can get it for free, which is the principle of the So Frugal Challenge. But this jacket had some good design lines on it, but I ended up adding a few more design lines for my project. In my Sew for Wool plans video, I mentioned that I had quite a lot of corduroy fabrics that I felt like would coordinate really well together. And I had shared some images from Pinterest that I had found that I felt like were a really cool combination of different fabrics together. And I felt like it would work well with my scraps. I will say when you unfold fabric scraps, they're often not as big as you think they are, certainly for myself. And I'm talking about literally like scraps of bits left over from projects, not remnants that I bought or smaller pieces of rectangles. They were really odd pieces, but I knew that I could somehow make it work. So I did have to add some extra design lines to this. So there is a back yoke on this jacket. I added a front yoke as well. So I basically laid the back yoke piece on top of the front piece and I drew a line where that sort of length of that piece was and that's where I trimmed the front and I added my seam allowance to the top and the bottom of that. But I still didn't have enough for the front piece. I was like laying all of my fabrics out and like laying pieces on top and figuring out like how can I make this work? And so what I ended up doing was adding an additional vertical seam underneath the front yoke. Now I wasn't quite sure where to put this. I was thinking it would look kind of like a princess seam vibe even though it wasn't necessarily gonna have any shaping to it. And I went for the middle of the pocket, middle of where the po pocket placement is meant to be. I think I would have preferred it to be a little bit more towards the front because I feel like you kind of lose it and don't see it as much, but still, 
I think it turned out super, super cool. So I wanted to make sure that I could use as much of the different fabrics as I could, so all the ones available, but I didn't want the same fabrics to be touching each other on any of the seams. I wanted it to be obviously like pieced all different corduroy. Let me show you guys. I'm telling you enough. You need to see what this looks like. So this is my finished Peppermint West End jacket. Obviously, I'll be showing photos with me in it, but didn't it turn out good? I'm just so excited. So I'll briefly just tell you guys what all these things are from. So this fabric came from the Ultimate Trousers by Sew Over It that I made. It's a stretch needle cord. So I was a little bit unsure how it was all gonna work, but I treated it all as just a straight up woven and it's fine. It, this has stretch, but it's not stretching. It doesn't need to stretch. The bottom here, this is from a bag that I made as a Christmas gift for a Secret Santa present at work. I made the bestie bag out of this, and I also made myself a bestie bag out of the same in a different colorway. So these are both chunky corduroy, and I thought it'd be fun to have the contrast between the two. This here on the front yoke was from the Jew Jeans by Closet Core Patterns, also ends up on the cuffs as well, and I felt like it was fun to have some of these appearing in different places. This is from the Pippi Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade, so I made that one, love that pinafore in general. It is another stretch needle cord fabric, and I feel like it just adds a little bit something extra to this. Again, this is the same as the back, so from the Bestie bag, my collar, this is the bag that I made myself. Inside here is from the Pippi Pinafore. This also has a binding that goes around the neckline, and this is a fabric, this is a bias binding that I had in my stash, and I feel like the colors really go well together. It's fun to have that little bit of pink on there. In general, I am just so happy with how this one came out. It turned out so cool. It was honestly better than I expected it to be. Oh, the other thing I will say I changed is the collar is intended to be like a rounded collar and I just straightened it out. So rather than having it rounded where it was, I just made a point. I just added, extended that pattern piece because I felt like that would look a little bit more the style I wanted and it would look cool with this look. It really does. I feel like the fit is great. I made the recommended size and I feel like in general, it's just a really cool look. The buttons are some buttons that I've had in my stash for ages. I didn't know what I wanted to do with these buttons, but they're really fun. There's a little bit of glitter in there. They're kind of geometric and I felt like it worked well with this overall design. Now, I know that this is gonna go with so many things in my wardrobe because it's made from things that are in my wardrobe. So I think that's just a really fun like bonus for myself. The other thing I will say, there's one part of it that I'm not 100% satisfied with, and this is like pretty much basically my own error. I've been having some problems with my hand and my wrist, which I'll talk about in a little while. I'm not able to use a rotary cutter at the moment, and I find it really difficult to cut super straight lines unless I'm cutting around a pattern. Cutting really straight lines is just awkward. I'm used to putting my quilting ruler down in my rotary cutter just to trim things exactly how I want them. There were some interfacing pieces that you're supposed to put on the inside of like the button placket and you're supposed to cut, I think it was four inch wide strips. And I would, I would have loved to just use my rotary cutter to make that really neat, but I was just eyeballing it using a pair of scissors and I was periodically putting the ruler against it to check. Yeah, 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 that seems about right. I should have probably drawn a line and cut along the line didn't do it. I think I expected that when the button band folded in, so it kind of creates like a facing, when that folded in that it would overlap significantly so that I wouldn't have to be so precise with my cutting, but it didn't. So I have a couple of parts where you can see a little bit of the interfacing, which I just don't love. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is actually using this binding and covering over that area, just because I feel like it will definitely look like it goes together. I'm gonna to have to do some unpicking here and unpicking at the bottom just to make sure that everything kind of sits in neatly. But I do feel like that would just smarten it up a bit because I don't think currently, it doesn't really flap open when I'm wearing it, but because it looks so good otherwise, I just feel like it lets it down, having a little bit of interfacing just exposed there. It's fusible interfacing. I can't trim it off. It's just a part of the fabric now. Now this pattern you are meant to use flat felt seams. I didn't go for flat felt seams with this. That was just a step beyond for me when I wasn't even sure if this was gonna turn out and I was gonna like it. I will say I tried it on before I put the collar on and I put the cuffs on and I was like, oh, this might be a little bit too wild. But once I put the collar on and the cuffs, honestly, it just kind of came together and I really, really do love the look in general. I feel like if I can make it just as neat as I can on the inside 
with that binding I'll be 100% satisfied. I did like a faux flat felled seam so I feel like it looks good on the outside and I feel like it's going to be nice and sturdy. I did need a lightweight jacket honestly. I don't have much in the way of lightweight jackets. I have more like warm coats so I feel like this is going to be such a staple. It is a massive triumph as far as my intentions for So Frugal. I feel like it came together really well and it is inspiring me to go ahead and use up more scraps. So I'm not finished working through my scrap bins. Those will be projects I'll be sharing with you guys as time goes on. I'm definitely planning to use up some more of those scraps and similar kinds of color blocking options. But this one is just such a success. It worked out, I'm really proud. I did also shorten the jacket by two inches because of fabric restrictions for my scraps. But honestly, I love the length and that is exactly how I would make it if I was making this one again in the future. Now I do have one, I would call it a work in progress, but it's probably debatable whether or not you would call it a work in progress. And that is this. This is a muslin. It is actually my first sloper for the Cashmerette Sloper School. So it is actually finished as it is, but I am in the process of making sloper number two. So the sloper school, if you guys are not familiar with it, the idea is that you get a pattern that is designed to be like a muslin that you make to fit your body. It has additional lines, they call them balance lines, so that you can see if things are hitting in the right place, if they're angled where they shouldn't be, and it makes it much easier to get a really perfect fit. There are also really wide one inch seam allowance, so that way you can adjust the pattern as needed. And the idea of the sloper school that I'm taking is that each week you go through different parts of adjustments and how to get the fit just right in each part of the body. The first week, week one, is vertical adjustments. And I have to say, honestly, this has kind of blown my mind. In general, I know that things often don't fit over my bust. Sometimes things can be a little bit tight under the armhole. And I feel like I finally understand what the issue is. Now, Cashmere does different bust cup sizes. So really, when I have this on, it fits over the bust, that's not the problem. But if you see the picture of my sloper, there's a vertical line, no, a horizontal line, that's a balance line on the bodice that's supposed to be at the apex of my bust. As you can see, it sure is not at the apex of my bust. It is significantly higher, which means I need to add some length above the bust line to get everything to fit where it's meant to. And I feel like if I were to do that on other patterns, I think this would honestly really change the fit of my clothes. So I feel like I've had like a real eureka moment with this. The other part of the vertical adjustments is looking at the waist seam, which is a tiny bit high compared to my natural waist. Not dramatic, I think like half an inch or something. So that can lower a tiny bit, but that will still be good to have in the right place. The other thing that was interesting to me is the hip. So I do have quite a lot of loose excess fabric in kind of the high hip area. It's not super loose at my actual widest part of my hip though. And the balance line, the horizontal line is meant to be at my widest part of my hip, but it's actually about an inch or so above. So if I were to add some space above that balance line, below the darts and actually shift everything down a bit, then I wouldn't necessarily have quite so much fullness at the higher part of my hip. I'm really interested to see how all this comes together when I actually make muslin number two. Just to mention as well on the back, I do have a bit of excess in the mid back. No surprises there if you've been seeing all the sway back adjustments I've been doing. So I've taken a little bit of length out of the center back as well and then gone out to kind of like no adjustment at the side seam because I don't need it to take it in at the side seam. I've got muslin number two cut out. I haven't sewn it up yet. I will update you guys, not necessarily every single sloper that I make, but I do feel like I'm learning a lot and I'm honing in on getting a better fit for me. I do feel like this may potentially lead to me making something with the silk velvet that I have for my Christmas dress. I'm trying out different options for that. I mentioned that before in my 24 for 2024 plans. I wanna sew with silk. I have this beautiful silk velvet and I wanna figure out the perfect thing to do with it. The idea of the sloper school is that you get a really good muslin fit and then they talk you through how to adjust it to make all different styles of tops and dresses, skirts. You don't necessarily need to have them all super fitted, but at least if you know the starting point, then you can choose to add ease where you want it. This is not an ad for sloper school, by the way, and I think actually you cannot join sloper school currently, but they will be having it going on in the future. And I just wanted to share my progress just because I think it's interesting as far as like a fitting perspective.
Now, mentioning my 24 for 2024 seems a little bit too perfect, and I'm gonna lead into that now. So in my initial sewing resolutions and plans for the year, I did mention that I have a list of 24 things I'm hoping to achieve in 2024. I'll put a link to that video if you haven't seen it and you want to hear a little bit more about it. But I have been giving regular updates every month on how I've been getting on with those. I don't have anything to cross off my list, but I have been making progress. So one of the things I wanted to do was to master making the perfect chai. Chai being masala chai, spicy Indian tea, and I'm closer. I keep getting to the point where I'm like, oh, this is almost perfect, but I think it maybe needs a little bit of this. And then when I make that change, it's just wrong. And then I have to figure out what isn't quite right. I feel like I've narrowed it down to the specific ingredients that I want, but it's now just about the ratios right now. I will be letting you guys know when I find my perfect chai, but I've been really enjoying the process and enjoying lots of cups of chai. Honestly, none of them have been undrinkable. So it's been interesting to continue experimenting. I also wanted to complete a 30 day yoga journey in 30 days. I generally at the beginning of each year do the yoga with Adrian 30 day yoga journey, but because of my hand and my wrist, I was not able to start doing that on the 1st of January, but I've gotten to a point now where I'm at actually able to do most of the things in yoga. So I felt like this was the time to just go ahead and do it. So I am about halfway through now, probably a little over halfway through at the moment. So I will be finishing in April. So I'll cross it off in April if and when I do finish that. But so far it's been really good for me. It's been really nice to be able to do that. It's something that I like to do at least a couple times throughout the year, go through her previous 30 day yoga journeys. I'm doing the breath one, which was initially for 2021 and it's probably my favorite one of hers. And it's been nice to revisit it and every day spend a little bit of time on my body. There are also a couple of books I wanted to revisit, old favorites. This is the spring volume of the R.H. Blythe Haiku book. So I have four of these and I wanted to read one of them each season. This one, spring one, obviously you can see why I wanted to read it in this spring season. I have got one haiku that I'm gonna put down in the comments down below that I particularly liked from this, but it's definitely really nice bedtime reading for me. I love these books in general. They are such special little treasures. The haiku in them are fantastic and I'm loving getting into the spring one. The other book is one of my faves. It is the E.E. E. Cummings Complete Poems. He is my favorite poet. Always love reading his poetry. And I wanted to read it sort of throughout this year. And it looks like I'm about like a little over a quarter of the way through. So I'm making good progress for March. I will pop in the comments or description as well. Some of my highlights of the poems that I read over the last month. I did also take three novels out from the library. So my intention this year was to take 10 books out from the library. I'm at nine so far, so I'm close. I'm planning to go to the library after this actually, and there's a couple of books that I wanna be picking up. So I'll be crossing that one off in April when I've finally done it. The other one that I wanted to mention is that I wanted to go on regular walks, whatever the weather. And I feel like this is a good example of why that is really good to do. So my husband and I have been going on some nice walks kind of regardless of what the weather is doing. And there was a day we went out where it was drizzling, probably not the most inspiring time to go for a walk, but we saw a double rainbow and a really good one at that. So, you know, it is worth getting out there sometimes when it's raining. If we're into this time of year in London for sure, in England in general, we get very much, they call April showers. April showers bring May flowers, but definitely we've been having some heavy downpour, but also some light drizzle and then periods of beautiful sunshine. So you kind of never know what you're gonna get, but I've been definitely enjoying going out there and seeing all the spring blossoms. It's very much my favorite time of year. The tulips have been coming out. I am such a tulip fan. They're probably my favorite flower. So getting to see the whole variety of tulips, spotting little things every time we go for a walk has been such a joy. Now, as far as life updates, I feel like things generally have been really moving in the right direction. I started back at work in March, which has been wonderful, something I've been really, really wanting to do. I'm a midwife, I work in NHS hospital, and it's been really tough to be away from work. And though I am back, I'm not like fully back. I've been going back very gradually, slowly increasing my hours, but also I've been only on admin at the moment. And that's just because I need to get a different type of scale that I can use for work. 
when we weigh babies, so I'm a community midwife and I visit moms and babies at home. When we weigh babies, we have these scales that have like a little sling, kind of like a stork sling that we pull up and we hold the baby at shoulder height to get their weight. But that puts a lot of strain on my wrist and my hand and that's been really painful and I'm not able to do that. So I'm getting some big, they call like tabletop scales that will be in a carrier bag that I'll be able to take around with me. But things take forever to arrive when you order them in the NHS. So I'm waiting for those scales and doing a little bit of admin in the meantime. But honestly, even just being able to do some admin and see my team, and I did a little bit of some antenatal appointments with seeing some pregnant women. I will say a lot of the activities that I do at work do put more strain on my hand and my wrist, particularly the admin stuff. So it's probably not ideal, but it is kind of what I can do right now. And it's, I think, more important to be back if I can be back. I'm making sure I take regular breaks and I'm kind of, you know, seeing how it progresses. Things have been a little bit more sore since going back to work, but honestly, the big picture, my hand and my wrist have been so much better than they were. I wouldn't say that they're, I'm cured. I wouldn't say that it's perfect. I went to go see my surgeon, my hand surgeon. I've been seeing the consultant who has been sending me for investigations. All the investigations came back normal, which is really great that I don't have anything dramatically obviously wrong with me, but he agrees there's clearly something going on. It seems definitely like my ulnar nerve, most likely starting from the elbow, but there's nothing different for me to do in particular, apart from the glides, the exercises that I'm doing, making sure that I'm not pushing myself too hard. And in general, I feel like I'm getting a good balance. Like I mentioned, I've been able to do my yoga again, so I can see a really dramatic difference that at one point I couldn't even do like an all fours position and put my hand down like that. It was just excruciating. But now not only can I do that, I'm also able to do planks, not necessarily every single plank that Adrian wants me to do, but a lot of them. So I can definitely feel that there's positive progress. More importantly for me though, probably the biggest one is that I no longer have to use a splint for sleeping. At one point I had a splint on my wrist. I have my arm straight on a cushion on a table next to my bed. It was super awkward, really uncomfortable position to be sleeping in, but I no longer have to do that because things have definitely been improving. So short thing to say there, Things are getting better with my hand and my wrist. Thank you to everyone who has reached out and asked me for updates, checked in with how I'm doing. I'm not the only person I know who has issues with my body and I'm sure I don't even have the worst issues. I know it's all really small potatoes, but in the grand scheme of things, it is still keeping me from doing the things that I love to do. I tried using a rotary cutter recently and it was still not a good idea. No knitting still, no hand stitching still. But honestly, I'm still able to do so much more than I was and I'm really happy that things are headed where I want them to be. I'm gonna see my consultant again in three months and I'm hoping things will be looking much better by then. So it was definitely a fun, creative kind of month for me. I really did enjoy sewing up all those scrappy projects. I feel like it was a good success, especially consider that I've been going back to work, so I definitely have less time for sewing. I feel like I'm not sure what April will bring. I'm excited to make lots of projects, but we'll have to see what I get the time to do. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I would love to hear if there were any particular highlights of any of the things I made in your opinion. I know which ones were the highlights for me this month. Please do give me a like if you did enjoy my video. Also, make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you want to see future videos, and I will see you very soon. Bye!